Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to build some beautiful charts to analyze data or to present data to your users and this is the demo application that we are going to build. So it's a very simple app. Um, we have some fake data that represent app downloads for iOS and macOS and I can change the data with these steppers here so I can increase the numbers of iOS downloads, I can decrease the numbers of macOS downloads or increase the number of macOS downloads and the changes are immediately reflected in our chart right below. This chart is really beautiful and has even a legend right below it and it is very simple to build. And I'm going to show you how you can do that right now. So what we're using is a great library that is just called charts. You will find the GitHub repository link in the video description below. And this is really cool because you can not only build pie charts, you can build line charts, bar charts, and you can even make them interactive. So this is a very powerful library if you want to visualize data. And you can start with this project, with the startup project that I've created for you. And if you open up the folder, then you will find an Xcode project and also a pod file in it because we're going to use CocoaPods to install this library. If you're not familiar with CocoaPods, then I suggest that you have a look at CocoaPods.org. Um, you will find an installation guide for CocoaPods right here uh, because this is not going to be covered in this video, but I'm going to show you how you can install now the charts library into this starter project. And what we need for that is to open up our terminal and I'm going to just show you how this works. So I've already changed my current Active Directory in my terminal to desktop. And this is also where my Swifty stats start folder is located. And to switch to this folder, I just enter CD for change directory and enter my Swifty stats start project or folder name. And now I'm in this folder. And if I have a look at the files that we have here, we also have our pod file. And I now just have to hit the command pod update to actually integrate my um, my charts library into my project. And after this processing is completed, we also have a new Xcode workspace in our folder. So this is just taking some time here depending on the speed of your internet connection. But as soon as this is finished, we are able to open up um, this new workspace. And this is also important that you no longer open up the Xcode project file when you're using CocoaPods, but the Xcode workspace file. And this is what we have now. I'm going to open that up and bring that to my recording area right here. So we have two projects here with the Swifty Stats project that we are going to use and the POTS project that actually includes all of the data that we really need in all of the library files. And now what I can do is open up my main storyboard to show you around a little bit. And I'm also going to build that project right now so that we can use the charts library when we're starting to code. And I'm also going to switch to a simulator device here so that I do not have um, to use a provisioning profile and get rid of my two arrows that are displayed at the moment. So in our storyboard, we have this very simple UI that you've already seen right here. And if you have a look at the view that you can see at the bottom of this storyboard or of this view controller, then you can see that this is just an ordinary UI view. But what I changed is just a little configuration in the identity inspector because as you can see, this is not a UI view class, but a pie chart view class. And this comes with our charts library. It's very cool because you can just add whatever chart you need here. For example, I could also use a bar chart view here or a line chart view, but we're going to work with a pie chart view. I've already added all the constraints that we're going to need 
And also I have connected all the UI elements with our view controller class. And this is where we are going to switch to right now so that you can see what is already added here. And our first step is going to be to import charts right below the import for UIKit, build our project again, and then we shouldn't see any errors. And also we are good to go to explore this class a little bit more. So the first outlet that we have here is for our pie chart view. This is also of type pie chart view. Of course, we have our outlets for our two steppers for iOS and Mac. Um, we have also some IB actions that are connected with these steppers to make changes in their values. And we also have the update chart data function that we are going to call later to actually update the chart and fill it with some life. And now the steps that we have to take to actually fill our chart with some life is to prepare some data. And I'm going to start with some global properties that we can use throughout this class so that we can update the data from our different IB actions here. And this is one time the IOM data entry that we're using for our iOS data. And now the cool thing is that we have a dedicated class or type for that. We have pie chart data, for example, but we also have a bar chart data type and so on. So you can check out the, libra uh, the library's documentation to figure out which classes you can use for the chart type that you'd like to create. And you will find all the data on the documentation in the GitHub repository. And it is very well documented. So definitely check this documentation out if you need some further information on different chart types. But we're going to go with the pie chart data um, that we have as an example chart here, and we're going to use pie chart data entry, and we can initialize that with a simple value here, and I'm going to initialize that with zero. We're going to do the same thing for our Mac data entry, and we're going to use pie chart, not pie chart, but pie chart data entry, and initialize it with a value of zero. And later we are going to create a data set and this is going to require us to fill it with a pie chart data entry array. So we're creating an array here, call it number of downloads data entries. And this is going to be an array of pie chart data entries. And I'm going to initialize that right here. So this is all that we need to do to pre-configure our fake data. Of course, when you work with real data, you can get that before and do some other stuff with it. But for this simple demonstration, this is going to do. And we're going to start with some configuration of our pie chart and in view to load. And here we're using the pie chart and first of all, access the chart description. You could, for example, add a chart, uh, a chart description text, which we are going to leave empty because I do not want to put any description text in my user interface here, uh, but you can definitely change that to whatever you need. And then we are going to prepare our data a little bit more. Uh, we're going to initialize it with the real values of our stepper because I've pre-configured these steppers with an initial value of 30 for iOS and also 20 for macOS. And you could, of course, download some information or use some other data from your app. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my iOS data entry. I'm going to set its value to the iOS stepper and its current value. And also what I'd like to do is give my data entry a label so that we get this nice legend that you've seen earlier in the simulator. So I'm using my iOS data entry again, accessing the label, and this is going to be iOS. And now let's do the same thing for Mac. So I'm using my Mac data entry, its value, and I set it to the Mac stepper and its value. And I'm using the Mac data entry again, change its label to Mac. OS. And this is the configuration that we need for our iOS data entry and for the Mac data entry. Now we're going to fill these data entries 
into our number of downloads data entry. So I'm going to use some brackets here to create an array. And now what I'd like to put in there is first of all, my iOS data entry, and then second, my Mac data entry. And then we can actually start updating our chart data and display this information. But we have not yet told our chart how it should work with this data. So we have to fill in some logic into our update chart data function here. And the first thing that we are required to do is creating a data set. This is just how this library works. So we first of all create a chart data set. Again, this is very similar to different types of charts and I'm going to use a pie chart data set. And again, you might be using a bar chart data set, depending on what you're using or what kind of chart you're using. So we're using the pie chart data set and we're initializing it with some values. And we could again, create a label for this data set, which we are not going to do, but I'm just passing along my number of downloads data entries here. And for my label, I'm passing along no. So this is the configuration of our data set. Now with this data set, we have to create a data object. So let's create a chart data object and initialize that with pie chart data. Again, the same with bar chart and so on. So what I can do here now is initialize that with an uh, with my data set that I've just created. So I'm passing along the chart data set. And that's it actually. Now since we're using a pie chart, we should think about some colors um, that we can give our different segments. And therefore, I'm going to create a colors array. And I've already created these colors in our assets folder. So all I need to do, do here is using UI color named use the iOS color, and then pass along another UI color object, and use the named um, initializer. And here we're using the Mac color. And I can do this because in the assets folder, I have pre-configured these two colors already. So let's switch back to our view controller and assign these colors to our chart data set. And then I can access the colors uh, property here. And as you can see, this is or this requires us to pass along an array of NSUI color objects. So what I need to do is take my colors object and cast that to a NSUI color array. And that's all there is to it. Now, we have configured all of the data, we have prepared it in the way that the charts library wants us to. Now we can use our pie chart and assign the data. So now I'm just passing along my chart data object or assign my chart data object to the data property of the pie chart. And I can run this in the simulator now and we should be able to see our data already. We cannot change it yet, but you will see that this is also very simple. So here's the simulator. We are running our app and as you can see, it's already here with 34 iOS and 24 macOS. Very cool. So how can we change it? Also, again, very simple. All we need to do is use our iOS data entry in our change iOS function, uh, which is an IB action that is connected to the stepper. And then I can change its value property and just set it to the sender's value. And of course, the sender in this function is our UI stepper. And after that, I can just call the update chart data function. Same thing for the Mac data. So I'm using my Mac data entry, its value, set it to sender and its value. I update my chart data and we can run this again. And if everything works out, then we should be able to change our chart data. So let's increase the iOS segment. And indeed, we can also do that. We can increase the macOS segment, decrease it. So very, very simple. And you've seen that we could build that in about 10 minutes. So you now have a possibility to integrate great visualizations with great charts in your application very fast. So if you like this tutorial, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you do not want to miss any new tutorials, you can subscribe to this channel for free. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.